Why, hello there. How are you doing, guys? Today I'm going to be playing an old game that I really enjoy. Or used to enjoy, rather. It's called Master of Orion 2. Now... I want to see love these little videos and things, you know. Ooh, it's the Antarans, guys. So if you guys are interesting, interested, Stellaris actually based a lot of their stuff on this game. And I'm sure others too in the genre. But there's a lot of similarities in many ways. Master of Orion 2, Battle at Antares. How good was that, guys? Considering this came out in uh, 92, was it? I'd have to double check, but uh, yeah, it's a good old game. I'm going to go for large, it's going to go for hard. What do we think? Average, I suppose, five players, yep. Let's just uh, jump right in. Look, guys. So, you can bear this to Stellaris, right? You've got the bird type people, avians. Uh, who are these? Um, Mekla. So, again, you can. Ascend and become cyborgs in Master of, in um, Stellaris. These guys, I'm not so sure. I'm pretty sure there's some cat people. I I don't even know. There's um, I don't know. All of these guys have their own personality. So the Sakaar definitely have rapid replicators on or rapid breeders because they breed really quickly. They're normally one of the most powerful groups in the game, actually, especially on the harder difficulties. Gnolems, again, they're good with money. Um, Silicoids. Interestingly, right, they are lithovores. These are basically exactly the same as the Rock Eaters in Stellaris, which is kind of cool, I guess. Although I think Stellaris obviously kind of copied either this game or other games or, you know, general games in the genre. Humans are good, they've got democracy and uh, like scientific research bonuses and they're good with diplomacy, they're charismatic. Um, trillions are kind of weird, but they can fold space so their ships travel really fast. And you've got the Clacons who um, are really good at uh, economy stuff and, well, they're sort of like ants basically. Uh, anyway, um, I don't see a custom option here actually. Where's the custom option gone? Uh, here we go, custom, and uh, just a little tip, guys, about this game, if you ever play it. If you choose a race, it means that that race is taken out of the game. So, for example, if you think silicoids are really powerful, you can be silicoids, and then you can rearrange them however you want. Actually, I'm not going to be silicoids. I'm going to go custom... And I am going to be the Cylons. The Cylons are kind of awesome. 
So you've got creative and large home world. Um, and low G world, which kind of makes them weak, I guess. You're only allowed a maximum of minus 10 points here. So we're going to go minus spying, minus ground combat. And that frees up a few more points. Don't really need large home world. <clears throat> so yeah, we're going to go creative. Well, creative is really good. What it does, it uh, allows you to get Orbitech. tech. Ordinarily, you only get one piece of technology per research. But with creative, you get all of them. Um, we've already got plus six. Uh, sorry, plus two science. Or plus two research here. Which is pretty good. I tell you what, if I can get one more point from somewhere, um, I can go democracy, and democracy will increase my abilities to generate research. Um, so yeah, the government's concerned with promoting trade, increasing revenue by fifty percent. Um, it's got all these effects. Research generated by scientists have increased by fifty percent. So I could go like this. Reduce my research and go for democracy. Again, which works really well with creative. Um, so we've got two points left. So, hmm. We're a rich home world, I guess. Which kind of <clears throat> gives me more minerals. This looks like a fairly decent setup. It's been a few years since I've actually played this game, so... Uh, yeah, democracy plus 50% and plus one research. That's really good. And to rule and name, I'm going to have to go with Portorius. Uh, green. I normally go for green. Mentor, home world, is fine. Oh, okay. So we're down here. So this screen doesn't actually change, guys. So you can see there's a wormhole in the middle of the map, which is quite cool. Um, these scouts basically explore. Um, oh, okay. So um, it's been a while since I've played this game. So yeah, I'm gonna basically explore. Um, the turn button is down here. We can click on our star to have a look at what's going on and as you guys can see um, you've got your food up the top here then you've got your production and then you've got your researchers so that's really not bad um, so uh, yeah what should we build <laughs> it's been so long honestly this game also has an auto build which you know considering this is quite an old game isn't well, I think that's quite nifty. So anyway, we're going to take a turn. And this research screen, I actually prefer it to Stellaris, if I'm honest, because you've got construction, which... Well, I suppose these are fairly self-explanatory, but these allow you to increase your ship um, <clears throat> construction and other things. Power, which um, is related to a lot of energy weapons. Uh, chemistry, which sort of helps your biological population. Sociology, very interesting. Uh, computers, which again is really good, it gives you the um, research laboratory. Uh, biology, again, um, biology is really good at increasing your food production and you know you can actually transform your species later on. You've got physics and you've got force fields. So I'm thinking um, Construction's really good. Level 2 of construction uh, enables you to build um, sort of automated construction things. So, <clears throat> a ship has arrived here. A huge ocean world, max 6 population, heavy G. So, I am a low G species at the moment, so um, heavy G is going to mean I pay like a double penalty. I believe. So that's not ideal, but I, I can actually send my uh, ship there to colonize. Alternately, I wonder if 
I think I can um, colonize this star if I wanted to. Uh, it's irradiated, so I'm going to get some pretty severe penalties. Um, so I won't do that. Oh, look. So it's barren um, with regular gravity, and it's large. So, and it's also got a wormhole. Shigenis. How do I... Oh, here we go. Let's have a look at the wormhole. I am going to colonize this area, I think. Okay, my scouts arrived. This has got a small toxic world. Two turns left. Uh huh. So I guess we'll colonize here. So yeah, worker penalty is 25%. That's because we're low gravity. But nevertheless, four research per scientist. There's no food here because it's a barren world. So we'd have to do some terraforming. And oh yes, terraforming is definitely a part of the game. <clears throat> I do apologise, I've got a frog in my throat. Uh, so freighter fleet. <clears throat> what the freighter fleet does is, uh, I believe it's here. The freighter fleet allows you to ferry food from one planet to another. <clears throat> Sorry, I, I'm going to have a drink of water, I think. I just had a bit of a <clears throat> spicy curry. <laughs> so at the moment, my planet's starving, so I really need a freighter fleet as fast as possible. I also need to make sure I'm making a surplus in food. At the moment, I'm not making a surplus, which is kind of a problem. Hmm. Mind you, I'm only trading goods at the moment, so trade goods produces money. And I'm going to go back here. So I can't buy this. It costs 72 gold to buy it now. So we're nowhere near there. Um, let me have a little think. I'm going to move my scientists up to produce more goods. And I'm also going to... No, it's um, a freighter fleet, not a transport fleet. It's been absolute years since I played this game, guys. Five turns to build it. One... Two, three, four. Okay, this is a really cool feature, guys. In Stellaris, you can appoint leaders and things, but they're really boring. Here, you could uh, appoint a leader to a spaceship, and it will increase your helmsman and um, navigator uh, abilities by five and one, respectively. So again, this is actually superior to Stellaris, in my view. Okay, so now I'm transporting food, which is great. If you don't have enough food for, for your population, they won't riot or anything. Although that is actually a part of the game. I'm going to build um colony f base, I think. It's going to take 40 turns. Now bear in mind... Ooh. Alkari fleet. Ah, shoot! I hope they don't declare war on me. Ah! So we've got the Akari up here, who are sort of the bird people. I can go to races and have a little audience with these guys. I do hope this is recording because, um, so yeah, we've got um, tree, trade treaty, research treaty. Um, you can't immediately tell if these people like you or not, but I'm going to go with a trade treaty. Okay, so they don't like my trade treaty. So this game has pretty good diplomacy. Again, I like the interface on this game. It is, again, probably better than Stellaris because... Stellaris, you've got the horrible menu down the left-hand side, and you're constantly trying to click things, and you're constantly scrolling. Here, it's all down the bottom. It's nice and simple. 
<clears throat> Nothing too really complicated. Just gonna skip ahead. So we got Rian Hut for Soul 5A. This is what I was talking about being creative, guys. Let's get creative. But look, here we go. Um, by researching this, I gain heavy armor, which you can apply to any ship and it will increase the armor, but it will also cost increase the construction cost of the ship. Uh, planetary missile to base, uh, missile base, fairly self-explanatory. Uh, automated factories, which is the one we want, although we're going to gain all three technologies. It's going to take 18 turns, which really sucks, but... I'm going to put some more searches onto that. Now it's gone down to 10 turns. Freaking brilliant. We've got the research. I'm going to go for hydroponic farms and biospheres. Uh, biospheres increase the population of a planet by two or the potential by two. And hydroponic farms will increase the amount of farm. Well, they'll automatically produce farm for you, farm uh, food for you. So uh, you don't need to um, have quite so many farmers. So actually, you think about this, right? The each unit here costs one food per turn. Um. So if I were to build a hydroponic farm, then I could actually move two farmers down here. Although the farmers obviously produce more. Nevertheless, it works out pretty good. So, um, I'm going to put the automated factory at the top here. And then I am going to buy it with money. It's 42 gold, 42 BC, or 21 production. Yes, I'm going to buy that. Excellent. And let's just have a look at the planet quickly. At the moment, I've got no production here. Excellent. So now the automated factory is going to be producing things for me. So it's producing five work per turn. And I've also got all my researchers still researching stuff. <clears throat> so what I really want to do is... Uh, oh, we don't actually need a freighter fleet anymore. We do want, we want an automated factory on this planet too. I'm going to put on auto build, guys. And yeah, I'm going to buy this. Brilliant. So we've got our construction capacity up massively now. You can do that, by the way, guys. So all of the production that I had formerly um, for the freighter fleet went on to the factory. And yeah, as you can see, we're really building some cool stuff now. <clears throat> so again, I'm thinking I'm going to... Oh, look, guys. Administrator Lydon for Noble um, has mega wealth. So that will increase the amount of money I get by 10. He's also a diplomat and he's famous. And famous means that you can attract other people to your empire. Hire him. Yes, freaking brilliant. And yeah, we're going to put him in the Mentar system. He's not really going to do much good in this system, but I'm just going to stick him there anyway. So you can see we've got ship officers. This guy we can hire. But we don't really have any ships. So that will cost us one gold to hire him per turn. I'm just going to hire him anyway. I kind of feel sorry for him. Poor beaky boy. <laughs> um, okay. Excellent. We've got our biospheres and our hydroponic farms. Now, I could actually research soil enrichment which will and cloning centre. So the cloning centre, again, think of Stellaris. It's basically the same thing. The cloning center will increase population growth. The soil enrichment will increase the amount of food each farmer can produce. And the death spores can be uh, used from a ship to eliminate the population whilst leaving uh, everything else. But I'm going to research computers, so I'm going to get the research laboratory. So again, we're building a colony base, um, which is important, but I'm going to get my hydroponic farm and my biospheres up 
And oh heck, I'm just going to get my missile base too. I'm also going to put the colony base down the bottom. So I could just buy this out. There we go. Now I'm producing three food per turn surplus. Which means I could put one of my farmers down here to do me more research. Excellent. Very cool. Um, so those are the main things that I wanted to get early on. Um, the tritium armor is quite important for any kind of ship that you might want. As a sort of, you know, very basic kind of armor. And, um, yeah, everything's going quite good. So, yeah. Oh. I'm tempted to buy the biosphere. It's not that it really matters. And again, you guys might be interested in the planet screen. Isn't this beautiful? You know, this uh, planet screen, it's just gorgeous. So you've got the stuff in the solar system on the left here. Then you've got your production here, the amount of money that's coming in. And remember guys, we are a democracy, so we're going to be getting double the amount of money. So um, we've got 10 taxes collected. Uh, which, five government bonus because we're a democracy, so we got um, 15 coming in every turn. Yeah, so each of these guys are going to be paying one tax per turn, so the more population you have, the more tax you get, and the more stuff you can buy. Which is cool. And I'm sort of thinking, why aren't I exploring? Ah, so we've got another um, barren world here, which I could potentially colonise. Oh, the, the Clacon ambassador. Seeing you defeated will not be enough. It is your death and the extinction of your entire race that I look forward to. <laughs> now, guys... This doesn't mean that he necessarily hates me, but that dialogue is great. Talking about genocide, I mean, jeez. He means business. And oh my gosh, look, he has four planets. So this is um, a serious risk to me. But Clacons have very good um, production, like I said, and um, I'm a bit worried now. Excellent, so he's accepted a research treaty. So he, he wants a research treaty, but he doesn't want um, a trade treaty. This is going to cost me money, but I don't really care because I've got loads of that. So the clack on. Don't want a trade treaty. What about research treaty? No, they don't want anything. I could offer them a gift, but I'm not going to do that. Scouts arrive. Okay, that's not a bad planet, really. So, the pollution processor and these advanced missiles are both really good. Be every unit of production can be dogged by pollution, and pollution will basically um, reduce what you produce. So, yeah, getting the pollution processors really good means that you can use more of your production in building things. That's not really our strength, but actually, I really don't want the bat. Um... I think I need the basics of ship design. Right, fusion weapons. Class 1 shields, which absolute must. Um, uh, 
Uh oh. The uh, Sakara ambassador. So you are what passes for an empire in the Cylon kingdom. Oh, Emperor. Um, you are truly much more pathetic than I ever imagined. Again, that doesn't mean that he hates us. So, the Clackons, they're not always very friendly. Um, I don't really know why I can't exchange technologies with anyone. So yeah, I can't trade check anymore. Non-aggression pact. Oh, he doesn't feel that we're a threat to them, so he's not going to bother with um, a non-aggression pact. So this guy increases um, food production by one. Oh, sorry. Um, experience points by one. It looks like an apple to me. Ugh. You can only have four leaders at a time, guys, so if... Battle pods are wonderful. They increase the cost of ships, but they also give you more space on the ship, so I really want battle pods if I'm going to be designing ships and stuff. So again, what I really want here is I've got a missile base on this planet. I really want the star base. This planet already has a star base. I don't know why it's building freighter fleet. Not that I really need that. Um, so research lab and colony base. Uh, I'm just going to buy it. <clears throat> oh, to be honest, I should have bought the research lab a long time ago. It will significantly increase the amount of research that my planets can do. Or that planet, sorry. So yeah, look, that's a massive increase in research. Battle pods, survival pods, and troop pods. Brilliant. So I kind of feel that I've got all the basics down now, guys. The basic technology that I'm going to need. Um, Space Academy, might as well get that. Oh, okay. That's a problem. So the Sakaar have um, stolen technology from me. Now, to be fair... <laughs> Alien psychology is good, actually, um, for diplomacy. I think I'm going to go for the spaceport because the spaceport should increase the amount of money that I get, and that's obviously one of my strengths as a democracy. I'm also slightly concerned because I've only got two planets at the moment. I'm just going to freaking buy that. Excellent. So now we've got three colonies. This one again is going to have problems, but. Automotive factory. Check it. The automotive factory is not going to be affected by the increased gravity here. So I've got one researcher. And I've got the automated factory, which is going to start building stuff for me automatically. Uh, let me have a little think. The other thing I really want on this planet is... Ah, uh, yeah, the hydroponic farm that's already being built. So I'm having my technology stolen. You can't be 100% sure who stole it, even though it says one of the other races stole it. You don't really know for sure. That's the thing about spying, right? A good spy will sort of uh, sabotage. Okay, so we've got a trade treat with these guys. Nice. Oh gosh, look. They've got five um, planets now, these guys. 
I want to start taking more planets. No, we don't need a stupid space academy. What we need is colony ships. Three, two. Excellent. We've got the spaceport out of that. Look, guys, robo miners. And the battle station. The battle station's uh, planetary defense platform, which replaces your smaller uh, planetary defense platform. But yeah, the robo miners are going to be great. They're going to significantly increase my production. <clears throat> Which is really important because I don't currently have much production. What does the spaceport do? Okay. Increases the money generation of the colony by 50%. We've already got a 50% bonus, so let's see what it does. It should, uh... Oh, yeah, look at that. Just gained eight extra money. Again, I'm fairly sure every building costs money um, per turn. So the population pays tax and the buildings cost money. I realise it doesn't look very good for me at the moment. Still got my two planet, well, two um, star systems. Having all my technology stolen. Excellent. So what you can hypothetically do is you can buy spies and then you can put them in a sort of present um, defensive position anyway I've got my robo miner plant freaking brilliant so now it's taking 33 turns to build a colony ship that kind of sucks now it's going to take 12 turns Actually, you know what I really want? I want a pollution processor. Oh. Whoops. That's wrong. Can I go back to biology now? I'm going to buy my pollution processor. bad at the top. Gonna be ready in one turn. Oh yeah. Produce a colony ship in eight turns. I don't know how smart the AI, AI is here, but I think they're pretty smart. I think they know if they declared war on me, they couldn't buy anything from me anymore. Excellent. So now we've got four spies. Then you guys may remember that my spying was not very good. Actually, I'm a bit concerned. Um, my two enemies here are sort of tense. Oh, yeah, um, the Tyran here, uh, the Sakaar, I believe they're called, um, are repugnant, so that means I can't do much in the way of diplomacy. Again, this is duplicated in Stellaris. Um, these guys are just rude, not repugnant. So I've got very basic defense against having stuff stolen from me. <clears throat> Soil enrichment and everything. Um, alien psychology probably will help out. It's 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick soil enrichment there. I'm then going to buy my ship. Excellent. Where should I... I suppose I can just colonise here. It doesn't really matter, I suppose. I'm going to put auto build on again. I'm going to build my automated factory and then I'm going to set it to produce. Uh, a robo mining plant, which again will increase production. That's going to take 30 turns. That's quite a lot. And I'm going to build a star base. I think I need at least four. Um, so the Clackons have seven the star systems. I've got three. <clears throat> oh, this is really bad. I haven't actually got any ships, so they're going to completely destroy everything. Hmm. Again, Baron isn't actually that bad. I believe we can grow crops on Baron, but it's only a size three planet. So it means it only supports three population, but. With the biospheres, that's five population that I can have. This one's a bit better, it's a desert world. Again, I'm awfully close to the enemy here, so... Oh my gosh! It's attacking my home world. <clears throat> I severely hope it doesn't destroy everything. So yeah, that's some um, space battles, guys. That was kind of cool. Oh, oh, look at that! The Clackons and the Sakaar empires are now at war. That is actually very, very, very good for me. So I'm kind of hoping they'll ignore me now. Oh, now they're at peace. That's not quite good. Oh, look, he's got mega wealth. Oh, oh, wow, this could be a game changer, guys. Look, financial leader, labor leader, and mega wealth. Yeah. That is literally like a game changer, it really is. This guy can be here, that guy can be there. Wow, look guys, 45 gold a turn. That is properly good. So we've got a democracy bonus, we've got our spaceport bonus, and now we've got a bonus from the leader of 30% on top of everything else. So yeah, oh wow. Some serious money coming in. I'm going to reject it and he's going to go to war with me. How much extra money do we need? A thousand! I'm going to raise the tax rate to 50%, guys. Oh yeah, there's a tax rate too. 
now what the tax rate does it turns production into money I'm going to again check on how much it's going to cost to build that. Oh, 700 more. I'm just going to go for an alliance if he'll give it to me. Whoa, so I've got an alliance now. Excellent. I mean, I'm at war with these guys, but I don't want to be. Oh, it's the transport coming in. Still quite a long way away from So what I'm gonna do guys, I'm gonna go to a Coria. I'm gonna build it and see if I can build the Coria. So this is again something I really love. This is the ship design screen. I'll walk you through it very quickly. So you've got the type of ship up here. Um, you've got your weapons and then you've got your specials down here. So battle pods. Increases the available space on a ship by 50% but increases the cost too. Um, got triple armor, triple structure points, double the marines on board. Uh, 50 ship range. 70 missile evasion which is actually not bad. Um... Mass driver is probably the best. Mercury light missiles. And what else we got? We don't really need bombs, but I'm going to go with nuclear bombs anyway. And special can be the anti missile rocket. Excellent. I'm going to go two nuclear bombs. Three, why not? And then we can give it a name, which is. Uh, a uh, king. Excellent. What I'm going to do, I'm going to build um, a king here. It's going to cost me 618 BC um, to buy it. But, oh look, here we go. Let's see who wins. <gasps> oh. Oh my gosh, guys! My technology is so vastly superior to the enemies here. Nice! We won the freaking battle, guys! I'll tell you what, because I'm so happy with that little ship, I am going to... Oh. Put on my bird guy here onto the ship. This is going to take three turns to move there. Are we sending two small ships to attack me now? I wonder if I can buy another king ship. The last one seemed really good. Oh, 300 gold off. Which will take me three turns. I'm just going to alter it, to be honest. Oh, no. <gasps> yes! Yes! Oh, my gosh. 
I'm totally winning this battle, guys. Yeah, we won! Look, the transport ships are coming in, and... Yeah, let's destroy them. Oh, yeah, guys! We destroyed the enemy ships, and we destroyed their transport. That is, like, um, a serious blow for the enemy there. You may have noticed um, the enemy ship self-destructed. <sighs> Fingers crossed my ship fully repairs. I think it should. I'm going to send this guy to retreat and I'm just going to attack like oh my gosh this thing's huge no 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 oh This is really bad, guys. He's destroyed the planet. I've got my missile um, battle station on here. That was a freaking disaster. I should have retreated, if I'm honest. How many of you guys got to produce some kings, man? Actually, no, I'm going to send my colony ship. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, to be honest. I'm going to send it to Wu here. Um... Wow, look, it's got um, an Earth-like planet. I'm thinking the only thing I've really got going for me is my technology. And I haven't even been bothering to research that, so... There's no way the enemy's going to attack me. I might attack this planet though, it might be stupid doing that. If he attacks me, he attacks me, I can't do much about it at the moment. Yeah, he's destroyed the colony. I shouldn't have done that. Never mind. Yes, man. So that guy I just hired had uh, Galactic Law, plus 22. So that actually gives me um, sight of the whole galaxy. I know, strange, but... One battleship. So we're constructing kings, which are mostly defensive at this point.
Right, so what's happening, guys, is when an enemy ship is in orbit of a planet, it blockades it. So that stops anyone from basically delivering food. So yeah, these people are starving here. They've got hydroponic food, but there's not really much they can do. Um, what we can do is they can research. I'm going to build another kingship here, guys. And I'm going to send them up here. I've got two destroyers, um, another on the way. Planetary Stock Exchange will increase the amount of money I get. Also thinking, I've got an alliance with these guys. Is there any kind of technology we can have? Neural scanner. Yeah, I'll just take your neural scanner from you. Stealing the technology anyway, probably. Three destroyers versus one battleship. Let's see what happens. Don't like these bullies. So again, we've got their powerful mass drivers, which is doing a lot of damage to the enemy here. Ah, oh, shoot. Woo! Okay, I should have tried to actually steal the enemy ship there. I should have... Why did I do auto? Oh my gosh. So it cost me one of my ships, but that big ship is now destroyed. wondering do these have um i'm gonna buy this star base for them just so they're protected wow increases the revenue of a planet by 100 percent astro university is really good it increases the production of each worker by one so let's go with astro university If I'm honest, I really don't want to war with these guys because I want to spread out. Oh, come on, give us a peace treaty. I'm not really concerned. I mean, the planet's going to be hungry, but... Yep, I'm going to stick a stock exchange on this planet. That should give us a load of money. Okay, three turns. Don't want it now. Okay, we're up to 74 gold. Very nice. Let's stick everyone on production again. Back up to 90 gold, so... I'm going to put in a fighter garrison here. Oh. Two destroyers, first one battleship. That didn't go too well last time. If he wants to attack me, he's more than welcome to. 
but yeah, I'm really pissed off with this spying at the moment, guys. So I think I'm going to go in here and um, change repeat build spy. Excellent. Stick half a population. Oh, crumbs. Two destroyers, one battleship. Again, if they want to attack the planet, they're more than welcome to. Because I think our technology so far ahead of theirs. Wow, I've got to notice, I've got a huge amount of money. Let's build a decent battleship to um, obliterate the enemy here. Again, triples armor points, triples structure points. Armor points can basically take a lot of bombardment damage and stuff um, but it's for structure points if you destroy the structure of a ship then the ship's destroyed really want some nice beam weapons Ig oh look at this iron pulse cannon ignores armor and structure whereas mass driver is not bad too You can go point defense, which gives you more um, weapons, but they're smaller and do less damage. Yeah, let's put interceptors on here. Anti missile rockets. The enemy use quite a lot of missiles, so. Yeah, man, this is a decent ship. Doubles Marine on board because I really, um, that'll mean my ship's harder to take and it's easier for me to take other ships. Okay, I'm going to call it New Hope. Don't sue me Star Wars, but that's something to do with Star Wars. <laughs> The New Hope ship is oh, going to cost a lot of money. <clears throat> I mean, the planet down here is currently starving. Oh no, they're building up more ships on me. Oh, crumbs. Feeling fairly hopeful about this. I wanted to move that ship. Wanna see if I can capture this ship over here? I've got anti missile rockets, but I don't think it's got any missiles out.
Ah, uh, it's exploded. Well, that is actually a really good thing, guys. It's gotten rid of all the enemy threat there. And I believe I only lost one ship. They lost, like, four. Oh, man. Federation increases the bonuses to 75%. Planetary supercomputer is very nice. Increases research on uh, pretty much everywhere it's built. So I'm going to use my money to buy supercomputers. Because I like supercomputers. Excellent. Whoa, yeah. Massive increase in research. Actually, I'm going to research computers now. What are they sending at me? One big ship. Oh, two big ships. One battleship, seven transport ships. All right. And oh, what am I looking for? Races. Look, I've got all of these spies at the moment. They should be protecting my empire, but they're really not. Sabotage is great, by the way, guys. Espionage basically steals technology. Um, sabotage so can sometimes... Um, I'm going to put these here, and I'm going to put them on sabotage. Hopefully, they'll make the Sakaar, these guys, attack them. Or vice versa, but... Rose, peace, treaty. Nope. Doesn't want peace. Am I still re... Oh, two battleships, two destroyers. Oh, no. I'm just going to walk over it again, I think, guys. Bear in mind, these ships are kind of out of date by now. <clears throat> I don't even know if the enemy has shields yet. Oh, you lost one ship. Oh, here we go again. Yes, the enemy is definitely becoming more powerful. I'm 
I'm going to buy my new Hope ship. See what you can do, guys. The weapons aren't so good, but always ran away. Definitely Astro University. I'm just going to buy a star base on this planet. It's annoying me that it doesn't have one. Class 3 shields. One battleship plus one battleship and seven transport ships. I want to see what our battleship can do against theirs. How's it holding up then? Hmm. Our battleship isn't actually doing that good. Actually, slightly concerned. I really can't afford to uh, lose the ship. I'll give it one more turn. Yeah, we've got better lasers than us. I'm just going to retreat, I think. Freaking disaster. I 
really don't want my stupid war. Oh, stupid, it's preventing me from expanding. Just gonna go with power research, I think. Oh, I don't even know anymore. Oh my gosh, I've completely forgotten to research um, weapons. Also, it's looking like Armageddon here, guys. Can no longer buy for that planet because it's blo blockaded. This could be the end. I don't think I've got enough firepower to destroy him, guys. Yeah, I've lost this. I shouldn't have put it this on hard if I'm honest. Oh, we've lost it, guys. 
being invaded. Oh. Goodbye, cruel world. I really hope you guys got some kind of enjoyment out of this um, bit of nostalgia. You know, everything the enemy got, did makes complete and utter sense, right? The fact that he declared war on me stopped me from expanding. There was a lot of poor decisions on my part, to be honest. You can't self-destruct a planet. I wish you could. I'm just going to give up, guys. Surrender. Yes. This is the end. Goodbye, cruel world. Cities crushed, people enslaved. Your insolence has cost you your empire. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that evil laugh. Ah. Uh. If this was ten years ago, guys. There's no way I would have lost, but seeing as how I haven't really played for 10 years, I don't think I did too bad. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Anyway, please like and subscribe if you did. And I'd like to make another one where I actually win. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll speak to you guys soon.